Very happy to welcome this morning, Mike. Pinball Clemens, uh, one of the most famous Canadian athletes ever, certainly one of the most mm. famous Toronto Argonauts, and now the general manager of the team. But if you've never heard mm. him, one of the greatest motivational speakers ever, and it's uh, always a pleasure to see him in real life and to have you on the program this morning. So thanks come for coming in, Pinball. I appreciate it. Well, Heather, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Well, I, I would say that right back to you. You know, I, I'm yeah. seeing the smile. I've only yeah. ever seen you in public with that beautiful smile and mm. with the most positive energy and outlook that you uh, exude. But I would imagine that that must be being tested right now with what you've seen and heard this week. How are you, how are you feeling and what are you thinking about? Well, I, I tell you, the, the thing that aggravates me uh, the most is uh, the hopelessness, uh, the, the, the sense of um, no idea where to go with this, uh, no, don't have anything, you know, there, there is, we've d dealt with it for so long and it's been so many years and so many different approaches and every time it seems like the distractions uh, are, are the promotion. Uh, this time uh, we look at uh, the violence that's taken place and, and those things kind of take away from the purpose of what we're, we're positioning here. And, and uh, for me, my bride and I um, celebrate our 28th anniversary this weekend. Beautiful. And uh, I say that because this is the equivalent of begging someone to love you. What do you mean by that? So what I mean by that is this, is that if, if we can go back historically, um, we look at uh, racism and its foundation in the, the U.S. Um, there was a businessman uh, in, in Georgia uh, back in the late 1700s who said that uh, uh, the Negro business or, or slave trade is, is to trade what the body is to the soul. And without it, no house can gain proper stability. Hmm. And, and so he was talking about the slave trade being so important. Not the slaves themselves, but the slave trade. Mm -hmm. he, he, um, it's followed up about 100 years later uh, with the Confederacy, the VP of the, uh, the Confederacy, Alexander Stevens, said, our government is founded upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man that slavery subordination to the superior race is his natural and normal position. We fast forward another hundred years, we get to um, Martin Luther King and, and uh, his assassination. And so as we go through this, there's a history of racism that is really clear there. And now we have to 50 years after that, we, 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 we come to a point where life still is not respected at the same level. And we are, because while we're out protesting, a protest is a protest, and, and it can really turn into a pity party if nobody else shows up. We're, we're just saying, hey, we need help, you know, you, you, know, you got to help us, you got to do something. If nobody else shows up, it, it's not until the greater community, and until white America, until white Canada not not only joins us but starts the rally right that's the that's the real tangible difference because until that love and appreciation happens from the greater community what 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 um, what people do here is is uh, it, it can it can feel of useless and of no effect so okay let me jump in in a second I just well, I'd like to li listen to you go because what people may not realize you were born in the United States you have a, that that eye in particular moved to Canada as a young man you can speak on, on on both country situations but that last point that you've just made is I think one that we're, we're really trying to really focus on of all people uh, Blake Wheeler the Winnipeg Jets player talked about how how can't just be their fight so you, you made that point. White Canadians, white Americans have to start the rally. The, the phrase that's getting a lot of attention right now is being a white ally. And it's, it's one that I'm not sure that we, we fully come to grasp with. How do you be a good white ally? How, uh, ally? how do you be a co-conspirator? How do you be an anti-racist? What's the key? Well, I, I, uh, one of the things that we talk about in our house... Uh, our girls sort of get tired of that dad preaching. Um, I, I'm a love guy. Um, you know, let, let's find a way to build bridges, not fences. And, and one of the things I, I tell them is neutral is negative. 
right? Because neutral is apathy. Neutral, neutral means I don't care. So when you're at the playground, it's not good enough to not go over and say hi. You know, do you want to play? So, so these are the kind of things that we always talked about is building that bridge because apathy, right, is nothing. So, so we say, how do, how, what do we do? Well, we, we need to not, not only say, well, how do I help? How do I get involved? We, we need to be forward looking, uh, like, like all the other things we do in life. If we, if we want to learn how to sing, we go register for a class, right? And, and so you say, okay, there's no class to register for. Let's start a rally ourselves of just our friends with no one else. Yeah, you know, we, 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 we uh, you know, bring people in and, and, and start something. Uh, we're, we're very creative. There's, there's a thousand and one things we can do to support in this way. But, but that really says, when you start it yourself, that says, I, I love you. That says, I care. In other words, I started at the beginning by saying, it's like ask, begging someone to mm-hmm. love you, right? You, you know, people don't want to do that. It, 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 if you come out and say, hey, listen, I love you, and this is how I'm going to show you, right? That now that's somebody I can uh, be with for 36 years like I've been with my wife. Okay, well, you raise her again, and a happy anniversary, by the way. But, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> she, she has a company. She's involved in the business life of Canada. Mm-hmm. You're, very, you're a manager now. You speak all the time to Canada's biggest companies. You deal with executives at the t- top order. I mean, so many of your messages, we could direct them at different people, to children, to young men. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I'm wondering about your message specifically for... Corporate Canada, what what might its role be uh, in terms of uh, addressing this and making listening better, uh, creating more space? What would you what would your suggestion be for change at the corporate level? Uh, you know, the when we speak to that, um, I was uh, with a, a group not long ago. Um, and said, you know, they said, you know, they were up in one of the uh, more uh, famous marginalized communities, and they say, what can we do there? Can we, can we, you know, do a party? Can we bring them over to? I says, no, you can hire them, hire their parents, right? That that's what you do. You hire their parents, and if you hire their parents, right, then they can take care of themselves. You can continue to develop that that larger relationship, but but also bring them over and teach them what you do, begin to show them, give them a ramp to employment, a ramp to empowerment. When, when we speak to uh, this particular challenge, the police get a bad rap. And what I mean by that is, is that it's the few, not the many. Police officers, I, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't imagine being in their position, right? When, when the thing that happens is most challenging in life, everybody wants to run wa- away from, mm-hmm. they have to run too. And, and their honor, their bravery, should be celebrated. And it's, it's the bad cops that make, make mess it up for, um, they, they're the enemy of the good cop and the, very, the vast majority of them are good. So when we put this just on policing, and yes, there are challenges in policing, but when we put it just to policing, we miss the point. Racism happens in the grocery store. Racism happens in our health system as, as we've seen in COVID-19. Racism happens, um, in, in many different institutions, and, and, and in large part, corporate Canada has been challenged because there are institutions that are in place that haven't necessarily um, uh, a- achieved what we would hope they would achieve. And, and, and uh, so from that perspective, I can say we have our foundation, and, and I've helped to raise millions and millions of dollars for different things, but, but it it's, it's been hard for our foundation to raise dollars in this area with corporate friends because they feel that this area is already satisfied in some way. And so uh, I, I, um, I have to tell you on this one, Heather, I wish I knew the answer. Well, you've certainly given us a lot to think about, as you always do. Thank you for the time, and, uh, and, and hopefully we can carry on this conversation because I'd like to, to bring you back to look more for the way forward in so many aspects of Canadian society. But thanks, as always, Pinball Clemens, for that smile oh. and for uh, your thoughts. Appreciate them. Thank you, Heather. They told me I needed to be a little bit more forward this morning. I'm getting direction from my, my kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were. You were just that. And, and, and you know, kind of gives us hope. You know, you still have that smile. Mm-hmm. I thought you might be pretty downtrodden given everything that we're watching and witnessing. But, you know, there seems like there's still, uh, there's still hope and optimism for the way forward that you're projecting. 
Even Don't after. smile to it. Smile through it. Man. Smile mm -hmm. through it. All right. Pinball Clemens, thanks from Toronto this morning.